I'm Amanda Savage Brown, and I'm a licensed psychotherapist and author in Chicago, Illinois. Before I got breast implants, I actually really didn't struggle with any kind of internalized breast shame or dissatisfaction about their appearance. Um, I had also witnessed my sister having breast augmentation and I took care of her afterward and I didn't want anything to do with that for myself. And it wasn't until after we had our uh, last daughter that, and I nursed for a long time, and then my breasts, even though they had totally done their job and they were champion at it, somehow my mind had determined that they were now a problem that needed to be fixed. They no longer, you know, matched the ideal aesthetic. And so once I started kind of looking at before and after pictures, it was like a done deal for me. And that part of my mind just took over and convinced me that I should get breast implants. Initially, like most people um, with breast implants, I had what I call a honeymoon period and I wasn't really experiencing any trouble with them. Um, I was a little disappointed with some minor things um, like rippling and uh, they were very, very cold, um, which I, I didn't even know that could happen with breast implants. Over time, they started to become more immobile and they had that kind of globe that round artificially round appearance to them and I became more self-conscious because to me it just screamed that they were um, unnatural and so over time that discomfort continued um, I wasn't really showing them off I wasn't really having a lot of fun with them and my sister was diagnosed with breast cancer and I became very concerned about having breast implants in my body because um, mine were over the muscle, which is not as common, and they definitely interfered with mammograms. And so I looked into Xplant uh, just as a proactive, I should probably get these out um, from a breast cancer screening perspective. And I was terrified when I looked into that surgery and I was like, I'm just gonna bide my time with these things. So I didn't really want them. I um, had changed a lot after I got breast implants. I kind of did a midlife career change. I became a psychotherapist. I worked a lot on self-acceptance. And I just, I really didn't want them in my body, but honestly, I was just too afraid to do anything about it. And so I just kind of tolerated living with these breast implants until one ruptured. As soon as I noticed this sudden shape change, I used that as my longed for catalyst and I scheduled consultations and moved toward Xplant. At those consultations, I was being gaslit about something that I didn't even know existed and it was called breast implant illness. And at that time, I wasn't on social media. I didn't know about that, but I, as a women's health expert, I was really concerned about what happened to women when they went to doctors for that reason. So I made a note to look into it um, and I was looking into it, but I still moved forward with my explant for other reasons. It was a much more involved surgery than I had mentally, physically, or emotionally prepared myself for. Um, the recovery was more difficult for me than I had ever imagined. But within um, about a week or so, maybe two weeks, I started feeling this return of energy and vitality. Um, and with about three months of explant, I had a complete reversal of a disability that had developed in my body and I had been misdiagnosed with peripheral neuropathy. I had never connected that, nor did any of my providers connect that with my body's, what I call the battle against the bags. But once my body was no longer in that battle, it was able to heal this problem that was in my arms. And I went, I went from disabled to, I mean, you can see I'm moving my arms, I'm fully functional and you completely reverse that.
If I could go back to my pre-implant self, I would urge her to not look at the before and after pictures. They have a way of making breast implants. It's called appetitive. It makes them very appetitive to your mind and your heart. And we live in a society that tells us that these mounds of flesh really, really matter to us. And so I wish I could go back to her and encourage her to look beyond that and to see that there was so much more to her than that post-nursing change to her breasts. And if a woman, if I was talking to a woman about whether or not, she, if she's on the fence and should she explant, you know, it's such a personal decision. And I always tell women, it's so important that you consider all the ways that your life is impacted by breast implants. Not just the physical, not just your health, but look at, you know, are you living with any values violations? Are you tolerating any kind of self-consciousness? You know, look at the full holistic way that you're impacted by them. As I was explanting, I witnessed so many women going through these journeys. And because I went through it as a psychotherapist, I saw things maybe a little bit differently. I saw what looked to me very reminiscent of um, when women are pregnant and there's so much focus on the pregnancy and the, and the physical side of it. And then they have this baby and they're, they're parents after that. And that's where a lot of the work comes in. And so I saw all this focus and it's wonderful with the support around the surgery. And I saw this huge gap in the psychosocial side of all of this. And I saw women losing partners. I saw women feeling so much, you know, post-explant shame with intimacy or maybe being able to go socialize. So I became inspired. I started specializing in the psychosocial side of breast implants. And I developed an entire program that takes a scientifically validated approach to easing human suffering and I translated it to the breast implant through explant experience. And then I decided to write a book because I know that women spend so much money on these surgeries and then afterwards with the detox and the care that we need to do. So I wrote a book so that women would be able to have access to that program and be able to work through it completely on their own. And it's called Busting Free and it's really designed to help liberate women from all of the social conditioning that leads us onto the implant table, convinces us to tolerate problematic breast implants or to feel badly about ourselves and our post-explant chest. Um, that's what I've done. For me to be an explant thriver, um, I'm just gonna be really real here. I have a post, uh, I have a distorted post-explant chest. Um, that is by choice. I decided not to do additional surgeries and I could and, and probably have a different experience. But for many reasons, that's not the choice that I'm making for my body right now. And so for me to be an explant thriver, it means that I'm still going out and I'm living my life and I'm finding great purpose and meaning in it, even though my breasts don't match this idealized aesthetic. It's all right, that's only a small part of my body. And it really, when I pay attention to it, it has almost no impact on my loving relationships and the way that I passionately show up to my life. So that's how I go about being an explant thriver is I just show up to life. I love it, I live it, and I just take my, my distorted post-explant chest with me.